to embrace the Back to the Land Call initiative in a bid to keep hunger at bay. At the end of the exercise, I sounded the opinion of the communication officer at the Red Cross about this latest run of the distribution process. Gambia Red Cross has really responded to the humanitarian needs of the last year's crop failure victims as a result of the insufficient rains that we have registered. This has gone a long way in responding to the call of our government for, the res for responding to the needs of the crop failure affected uh, people of the country. For the next four months, these families, many of them from some of the heavily affected communities of last season's food crisis, will largely depend on food provision from the Red Cross. For GRTS News, I am Fatou Jassi. The West African Insurance Institute on Friday graduated its 33rd batch of students. The event, which brought together officials from member countries, among them commissioners of insurance firms, marks the formal completion of programs in areas such as insurance, marketing and law. More elements is it tells us more. The authority of the academic board and the governing council, I present to you this candidate from the West African Insurance Institute, Banjo de Gambia, those of them who are here present and those unavoidably absent for whom I stand proxy, who have been found worthy both in character and in learning. They are students drawn from the five Anglophone West African countries that constitute the membership of the West African Insurance Institute. Today they are graduating with diploma certificates in insurance, marketing and law. Out of the 82 graduating students, 67 are trained in insurance, obviously reflecting the actual motive that set up the regional training institute over 34 years ago. In delivering his State of the Institute address, Professor Mike Ikipolati, Director General and Head of the Y Mission, said with the support of the Gamba government and the insurance industry, the institute which enjoys a diplomatic status has a good prospect. We are particularly grateful, as always, to the government and people of the Gambia for their hospitality and support. Most especially, we express our deep appreciation to our grand patron and the President of the Republic of the Gambia, His Excellency Sheikh Professor Alhaji Dr. Yahaya A.J.J. Jame. We are also expressing our humble appreciation to the various presidents and government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Republic of Ghana, Republic of Liberia, Republic of the Sierra Leone, and our host, the Gambia. One of those credited for contributing to laying the foundation of wise glorified future is Mambo Renjai, the immediate past chairman of the Institute's Governing Council. His message to the graduating students is for them to keep pushing and not feel complacent with the certificates they have just achieved. The human mind is a wondrous thing. It is restless, always eager for action. So rest not on your oars or always strive to achieve the best you can in everything you do. Whilst you have been here, you have developed analytical skills, but that alone won't get you through. You must be very smart. Therefore, you would need to develop some discernment, some practical common sense education. Mamburenjai, however, called on member countries of Hawaii to send more students to the institute in order to improve what he described as the current unimpressive enrollment rate. We are still not very satisfied with our enrollment levels and would like to appeal to you that our doors are still open and I plead for your kind backing. Why it exists for you, and it is through your support that the Institute will flourish. The graduating students were awarded certificates in three grades, lower credit, upper credit, and distinction. The most outstanding students, both in overall performance and individual subject area performance, went home with cash prizes sponsored by different insurance companies and organizations from Anglophone West Africa. Ghanaian Mrs. Meldred Dede Matea, who graduated with a diploma in insurance, is the best graduating student. And in her speech, she called on her colleagues to live up to the standards expected of them, noting that the school has put what is right into them. I charge us to be worthy ambassadors, 
always projecting the good image of the Institute to the outside world and in all our endeavors. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you will agree with me that the awareness, knowledge, and practice of insurance in this sub-region can be likened to a young plant which needs to be nurtured into maturity and fruit bearing. After 34 years of existence, the West African Insurance Institute is moving speedily. The latest on its academic menu is the collaborative offering of bachelor's, master's, and doctorate degrees in law. The Institute's current campus is also being upgraded to the status of a university thanks to the generosity of the President of their host country, His Excellency Sir Professor al Haji Dr. Yahya E. J. J. Jamed. Modula Minsise, Jerches News. A new handbook in humanitarian law designed for members of the National Assembly has been launched. Deku Mademba was at the ceremony and this is her report. To be as old as the human race itself, the need to protect persons and objects is but a necessity. Customary laws that protect the rights of people in warfare were in place, but something greater and more distinguished was needed. This gave birth to the international humanitarian law. Under this law, individuals who are no longer participants in hostilities are protected. It also prohibits the use of weapons that make no distinction between civilians and combatants or cause avoidable distress and damage. The Gambia Red Cross Society champions of humanitarian services with the view of disseminating and promoting respect for international humanitarian law pieced up a handbook for lawmakers of the country with the hope that IHL is officially binding throughout the country for government, public officials and civil society. The essence is your role in ensuring that the Gambia participate and actively contribute in ensuring international humanitarian law is guaranteed. International humanitarian law is a set of rules which seek for humanitarian reasons to limit the effects of armed conflict with the principal concept that even in warfare, all acts are not allowed. It's the human rights component of the law of war. This is the, that aspect of international law which comes to regularize wars, to make laws, so to make wars sort of, or to humanize war. International humanitarian law has come to humanize wars and to make wars and conflicts less destructive, less damaging to uh, the human population. The Vice Chancellor of the UTG, Professor Ka, reminded the gathering that the document at hand is not static and is open for correction where needed. This document is a live document. It's not a static document. It's a document that will continuously to be improved. And I will urge not only the National Assembly members, but anyone who happened to have an opportunity to review these documents and find valuable inputs should certainly channel it to the Red Cross so that they can continue to improve this very important uh, uh, document. The International Humanitarian Law Handbook is intended to develop broader community understanding of IHL as well as raise responsiveness among public officials. But what should it mean to an ordinary Gambian? It is also important for the ordinary Gambians to know that we are a very active actor in the international system. Gambia is no small in size, but we are one of the most important actors in our sub-region. We are known for actively involving in peacekeeping missions and peacemaking missions in the sub-region and beyond. Parliamentarians are expected to play a critical role within the wider community and also raise subjects of concern in their capacity as opinion leaders. For GRTS News, I am the Kumadem. Well, you can also follow that story and other GRTS programs live on our website, which is at www.grts.gm. There you can also monitor GRTS Radio Live. Well, that takes us to our very first break. The news continues in just a moment. for an extreme summer concert. Sometimes I get a good feeling. Pull, pull, pull it up, selector. Saturday, 7 July, live at the Independent Stadium in Bacow. It's the Afroso Extreme Concert. In collaboration with the American Embassy, Afroso brings you this summer's 
biggest concert. Come celebrate with Africell the grand launching of the Africell website, www.africell.gh.